Well, hello everyone, this is uh, Chris back again with The Ancient Scholar. Uh, today I'm just going to continue talking um, about hemodynamic monitoring, uh, specifically uh, some, some more uh, specific aspects of the external equipment. Uh, just because um, we interface a lot with this external equipment, and I know people are probably real hungry at this point to, to dig into what the numbers mean and the values and the waveforms and all that, and, and, and we're going to get there. Uh, but we need to, to recognize that the, the first thing that we're going to do uh, when the decision to insert a hemodynamic, uh, an invasive hemodynamic um, line in place, the first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to set up our equipment. Um, after the line's inserted, we're going to need to hook up the equipment. We're, we're going to have to zero it and interface with it. So I just want to take some time. Um, again, that's what my last video, video three, was about just familiarizing you guys with the equipment that, that we actually interface with uh, because that is just as important as in interpreting uh, the data um, or in integrating the data into the care plan you know based obviously on the clini uh, clinical presentation of the patient uh, so it is very important that we we have a good understanding and perhaps even a better understanding at least at a, cl a, a clinician level um, of how to use our equipment um, uh, because the information um, can be skewed if we do not properly set it up, zero it, interface with it, so on and so forth. And, and clearly, um, you know, there there are some hazards involved with improperly interfacing the, the the equipment. You know, we talk about you know not flushing it properly and getting blood clots, air bubbles, uh, things of that nature. So what I want to talk about real quick is actually how to zero it. So we talked about uh, this little guy here being the transducer, this is how we do our fast flush, um, and this of course is what uh, plugs into the cable that ultimately goes to the monitor. So what's going to happen is when we um, e initially um, get an invasive line inserted, I'm, I'm going to hook, obviously, um, you know, we're going to make sure that it's in good position all that, but I'm going to go ahead and, and hook this up uh, to the distal end of that line, wh whatever it may be, a, a PA calf, an art line, or a, a central venous catheter. And then what I need to do is I need to zero that line to atmospheric pressure, right? That line has to take atmospheric pressure into consideration and, and use that as a baseline pressure, and then all the other values are, are zeroed all based off that value. Otherwise, we're, we're just gonna, not going to get um, accurate values, accurate waveforms, and so on and so forth. So let's just talk about how we would go about um, zeroing. So first of all, we need to zero to atmospheric pressure. Now, um, you can see attached to the transducer, I have this little 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 thing here with a little handle that says off on it. Um, that is known as a three-way stopcock. And uh, this is actually, this has been very confusing for me when I first started uh, doing hemodynamics uh, some years ago and I started flying and actually having an interface with some of this equipment. I was very confused by what this meant. The easy way to, to remember this is the little thing that says off, wherever it's pointing, that part is off. So right now I have this little yellow port here. And if I open this port, um, that's actually open to atmosphere now. You can see that the off is pointing here. So that means that this port is off and flow can go this way or this way. So I have an open conduit here. My conduit is off here. So hopefully that makes some sense. Wherever this guy points, that part is off. And of course, I have three different ways I can point, and that's why we call it a three-way stopcock. So when we zero, we want to be very clear that when I zero this, I'm zeroing this to atmospheric pressure, to the pressure in the atmosphere. So um, what do you think needs to be off? What about this here? Well, that was pointing to my transducer, and clearly that's a bad situation because I want my transducer to zero to atmospheric pressure, to take atmospheric pressure into consideration. So what I actually want is I want a conduit to the atmospheric pressure. So what I'm going to do to zero this is I'm going to flip my off here because this is going to the patient, right? So I, I'm no longer interfacing with the patient. This is off to the patient, and I have a conduit from here to the transducer. 
So that's what I'll do. I'll go ahead and I'll have this transducer um, properly placed, the flebostatic axis, be that on a level on an IV on an IV pole or taped to the chest, as as a case may be, um, with me during transport. I'll go ahead, turn this, the patient off. So now the transducer is looking at atmospheric pressure. I'll go ahead and hit the zero button on the monitor. It'll go ahead and zero, and then once it's zero to atmospheric pressure, I can turn this down, turn the atmosphere off. I can put my little cap back on. Obviously, you want to use very good aseptic technique here, and then go ahead and, and monitor, and I can even do something called a fast flush to check for what's known as damping, and we'll probably talk about that in another video. Okay, guys. Hopefully that makes some sense. Hopefully that uh, maybe if you were having some difficulty um, understanding that, that, that makes a lot more um, intuitive sense to you guys. Um, take care. Have a great day.